I'm a T-Mobile customer and I signed up for the Starlink beta a couple months ago and I got into it. So I took my iPhone 16 to Joshua Tree, to the Mojave, to the foothills of the Santa Anas to test out the Starlink texting service that I now have on my iPhone. I wanted to know, does this actually work? Can I send texts back and forth? Uh, is it reliable? Would I you know, trust my life with this service if I needed to dial or text 911 in the backcountry? And how does the Starlink texting compare with the Apple Global Star texting, both of which are on this iPhone 16, uh, which really just blows my mind that this phone has two separate satellite systems on it. That's that's pretty amazing. Uh, it's probably only going to get better in the future. So that's what I did. That's what the test is all about. It's not about theoreticals. It's about what actually happens when I tried to use it. All right, let's clear some things up because when I say Starlink, people think about the Starlink internet service, which has been around for quite a while. And there's thousands of Starlink satellites, I believe. This is not that. That's a whole other thing. There's not a form factor that's small enough to fit in your phone right now for that internet service. There probably will be at one point. But what we're talking about now is the Starlink Direct to Cellular DTC service that was announced with T-Mobile a year or so ago. The idea is, and this is the easy way to think of it, when you use a cell phone, like any standard cell phone here on Earth, uh, you know, there's a cell tower. There's a cell tower, you connect with a cell tower. Well, imagine taking that cell tower, putting it on a low Earth orbit satellite a couple hundred miles up in the sky, you know, traveling at 17,000 miles an hour around the Earth. Obviously, the technology and maintaining a connection on a satellite is a lot different than maintaining a connection on a stationary tower on Earth. But that's what is special about this technology and what Starlink has managed to do. So that's what we're talking about here. There are other competitors. I do have a Verizon Android phone uh, that has satellite text messaging that's not on Starlink that I am testing right now as well. So if you don't subscribe already and you want to know what happens there, uh, stay tuned because that one will be coming out. But that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the Starlink direct to uh, cellular on this phone. Here's what happens when you go into this satellite mode. First of all, you need to not be connected to a terrestrial cellular tower. So you're at a cell range on Earth here. And then you will get a one bar and it will say sat. And then on the other side, I have a little text here. A little text says Starlink T-Mobile. On CarPlay, it's one bar with a one X. And then what I thought was handy was I'd get a text message that says you are now in Starlink satellite messaging zone, just so you know. So I thought that was a handy way to let you know that you could use this and maybe to you know adjust your expectations accordingly. Uh, I don't know whether that's going to happen out of beta or if that's you know just something now, but I thought that was good because otherwise you don't really know whether you're in range or not in range. It's not like the Apple experience where there is, you know, it says pointed at the satellite, which you don't have to do, by the way. You can use Apple satellites just laying down too, but I talked about that in other videos. But anyway, with this, it's just either one bar or not one bar. What I found interesting was, even though I was under clear blue skies in the continental US, which is part of the coverage area right now, it's, I think, continental US, Puerto Rico, Southern Alaska right now, um, I didn't always have coverage. I didn't always have Starlink coverage, uh, which, you know, was a little unsettling if you're going to rely on this as a tool to get you out of an emergency. Uh, not that you always have coverage, even with an in-reach, there's times you don't have coverage. But with this, I'd say maybe 75% of the time or so, this is the hunch ballpark, I would have that, those bars. And the other time, I did not have those bars. So important to know. Also important to know is that when I was in this mode, the battery drained down uh, rather aggressively, more aggressively than it would if not. And I think what's happening, I've looked for an official answer, but I haven't found any. But I think what's happening is that it's constantly connecting and disconnecting from these cell phone towers that are flying thousands of miles an hour um, above the surface of the earth. So that burns a lot of battery. It's almost like using your phone in the backcountry outside of airplane mode where it's constantly looking for a signal. Same idea, I think, just a hunch, um, but the battery did seem to get burned down more than it did when I wasn't in that mode. And you can't use Starlink in airplane mode. You have to be out of airplane mode because the phone is really just connecting to these cellular towers in space. Sending and receiving messages was a bit of a mixed bag. If I went into my messages app on iOS, I noticed that it was automatically green for me, which was good. So it's sending this via SMS and not iMessage. Although there were a couple times when I was connected via satellite uh, that it was blue and it wouldn't send. That did happen, but generally it was green. I'd type a message out, I'd send it. 
I get this progress bar up along the top, just like you do with a normal message. It just takes a little bit longer generally. It doesn't tell you to point it anywhere. You just kind of hold it however you want to. And eventually it would go through. Now, once it went through, the recipient would get it very quickly, usually within a matter of 30 seconds or so. So that aspect of it was great. Now, replying back to the satellite device from the recipient was a mixed bag. Uh, it didn't always go through and it would go through maybe a little bit later or I'd have to like send a second message on the satellite phone and then it would come through when I sent the second message. So I don't know how often the uh, Starlink is checking for new messages, but they didn't always come through. And when they came through, they came through not in the right order that they were sent in terms of the conversation, the timestamps on the conversation. I think rather they came through uh, in the way that it received them, uh, not when it sent them. But again, this is in beta. It's going to get worked out. But it did send in SMS mode. Uh, the iMessage doesn't work. And the times when it did go to iMessage, I would just go into settings, into my messages app and say, send as SMS. That's a great trick to use too. If you're ever in like one bar, I always hear people saying they can't send a message in one bar. That's because if you use iMessage, I believe, or RCS that will try to send it as data, you need to send it as SMS. So if you just switch your messages to send as SMS when you're out hiking, they should go through a little bit quicker. Now, there were times when my responses coming back to Starlink didn't come through at all. For example, I was out with my buddy Joey from the Safe Travels podcast. So check that out if you haven't already. It's a great podcast about the outdoors. He interviews a bunch of park rangers and people at the parks and all kinds of interesting things that you didn't even know were going on. I'll put a link to his channel underneath, but we were testing this out and I had sent him three messages or a couple messages over Starlink satellite and he responded to each one right away, but I didn't get those responses. It wasn't until I went back into cellular range that I then got those responses and it put them into uh, my text record here. So overall, I would say this worked some of the time. Uh, sometimes I would just send a text message, it wouldn't go through, I'd get a message that you know, didn't go through. Uh, but you know, I was expecting it to work a little bit better even though it's in beta, beta maybe should have been a little bit better. But again, we're going to cut some slack. I'll test this again when it comes out for real and people start paying for it and see if it's improved in any way. Uh, maybe they just need to work out some of the bumps with Apple and the iOS system. But overall, I'd say if I had to just pick a, a guess, guesstimate number here, it worked about 60% of the time uh, sending messages back and forth and maybe about 50% of the time in terms of getting the messages inbound from the other phones that were not on satellite. In the areas where Starlink messages worked for me, I wanted to contrast it with the experience using Apple satellite messages, which is the global star system. And you'll watch videos out there and people will tell you the Starlink's much better because there's more satellites. But I know from experience in the real world, that's not always, you know, the logical answer like that is not always what equates to the real performance in the field. So I wanted to try it out. Now, it's important to note that the Apple satellite messaging is really well integrated into the operating system. So it'll tell you where to point the phone in order to connect to the satellite. And just so you know, you don't have to point it at a satellite. That's to get your best directional antenna connection there, signal strength. But you could just lay it flat on the ground and send messages back and forth. I've done it many times. So in a way, you can kind of replicate the way it works with Starlink, too, where you're not pointing at it. And this is how I did the test. I did not point it. I just let it lay flat and texted it just like I did with Starlink. Now, in general, messages went back, back and forth quicker. And like I said, it's better integrated into the... Uh, the iOS, the ecosystem there, you can tell when you're sending something over satellite. You can tell when you've got a message via satellite. You can tell when the recipient is on satellite. All of these things have been integrated. And, you know, I'm not going to fault Starlink for this because Starlink has a very innovative solution in terms of how they're doing this. And it's not it's almost like a like a loophole or a backdoor to the way the cell phones work. I hope that iOS integrates with this a little bit better and we get a little bit more feedback similar to what we do with the Apple messages over satellite because, um, you know, I think there's potential there for both. But in this case, I found that in my experience here in Southern California and the Mojave, like I said before, mountains here in SoCal, the Apple satellite messages worked a little bit better than the Starlink messages. 
As I mentioned, my Apple has T-Mobile Starlink and it has Apple Messages over Global Star. So how do you switch between both? Well, if you have what Apple thinks is a cell connection, which is your Starlink satellite connection, because it is an LTE connection with a satellite, you can't get into a satellite mode on the um, on Apple Messages, which is unfortunate. You can't put it in airplane mode and use Starlink. You can't put it in airplane mode and use Apple Messages. According to the Apple documentation, there is a way to turn off uh, carrier-based satellite connectivity. Now, when I went to do this, I saw that it said T-Mobile under satellite there, but clicking on it just brought me to the satellite screen and did not allow me to turn this on or off. In an ideal world, or when this is maybe hashed out and in, you know out of beta, there'll be a toggle switch there to take it off of Starlink so that you can just default to the Apple messages if you'd like. I'm sure they're gonna charge at some point, but you can figure out what's gonna work better for you. But the idea that you could have potentially two satellite connections or two options for satellite connectivity on a phone, I think is a pretty great one. I think they just need to work the kinks out, which brings me to my next topic. We need a new version of airplane mode. I can see from testing not only the Starlink and iPhone, I'm also testing Verizon and Skylo. Uh, subscribe, I'll have a review on that coming out soon, but same idea, messaging over satellite. Um, but here's the deal, when you're when you have your phone on in the back country and there's no cellular tower, it's constantly looking for a connection and that burns the battery down, which is why most people, when they go out hiking with their phones, put it in airplane mode. It'll stop looking for cellular towers, but it still allows you to use GPS and track hikes. With Starlink, I noticed the battery drain as well because it's constantly connecting with different cell towers in, in space. And this is a problem because the battery drains down very quickly and you can't have it on airplane mode and also have it checking for satellite messages. So what I think needs to happen on the operating systems on iOS, on Android, is that we should have a preferred carrier list. So we should be able to say, first check um, you know, T-Mobile Terrestrial, then check Starlink uh, Satellite, then check Global Star, whatever it is. And you could obviously snap um, carriers in there and then have a check interval, just like we have on inReach, check for messages every 10 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, whatever it is, it won't be constantly looking for a cellular connection unless that interval comes up and then every 10 minutes, it'll check for messages, download what it needs to, and then stop. Um, and maybe you can tweak that even, maybe you could say, just get me text messages, get me everything, I want my stock you know, report and you know, emails and all that other stuff but having some kind of control there, I think there needs to be a mode like that because it's been obvious from using this you know, for quite a bit that um, the technology is kind of pushing the boundaries of what the phones are set up to do and the phones aren't really set up for these types of connections and these types of scenarios. So maybe we'll see that when the new iOS is announced and, uh, and the new Android is announced, I don't know, but I think uh, something's, gotta, something's gotta change in this world. So to answer the questions I was setting out to see, does the messaging work? It kind of works. Wouldn't call it reliable. Um, would I depend on the connection with Starlink for my life for a text for 911? I'd say if I have it and I could use it, that's great, but it wouldn't be my number one device in terms of a safety device in the outdoors. I'd probably get an in-reach. That might be good as a backup. And then, you know, how does it compare to Apple? I think the Apple is a little bit better, at least right now. And again, Starlink is in beta. now in beta and supposed to go live in June or July. It's gonna cost you anywhere from free, depending on your T-Mobile plan, up to $20. And you'll be able to allegedly get this if you're not a T-Mobile customer as well. So if you're, I think, Verizon or AT&T, you can buy this as an add-on to your AT&T plan, I think through T-Mobile, maybe they'll just give you another um, you know, eSIM or something like that. I'm not sure how it's gonna work, um, but you will be able to get this. Now, in the state it's in right now, I would not pay for this. Uh, but again, I'll test this when it comes out for real and I'll give you an update and let you know if it's worth worth your money or not. But overall, I think this is a good thing. I can already tell whether it works 100% of the time or not. It will probably save lives in the outdoor. So for that, I think it's great. And even not even you know that type of mission critical messaging, but even just telling a loved one, hey, I'm going to be late or hey, I'm lost. I took a wrong turn on this trail. Can you help me get out of here? And having the ability to text back and forth. Uh, you know, without dispatching a helicopter to come rescue somebody will be something that's very valuable for folks. So kudos to Starlink for coming up to this. And uh, I look forward to 
testing out in the future. If you have any experiences with it, leave a comment underneath. I'd be interested to hear uh, what that was. All right, guys, stay safe, and I will see you out on the trails.